Former Vice President Mike Pence today is calling on Congress to approve funding for aid to Ukraine and warning Russian President Vladimir Putin will eventually wage war on a NATO country if Ukraine loses the war to do so as soon as possible. Pence is in Belgium for the Brussels Forum, speaking on the danger of American isolationism. There are those who think that if we continue to support the Ukrainian military with resources, uh, that will somehow lead us to World War III. I believe the opposite is true. I believe the real lesson of history is when we falter in our commitment, um, when we don't take tyrannical regimes seriously, and we don't take dictators at their word. And joining us now, former Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, Mr. Vice President, you've been talking to European leaders there in Belgium uh, as you travel across Europe. What are you hearing from allied leaders about Russia's war against Ukraine, how dire the situation is there, their fears about what Putin will do after Ukraine? Well, I think you, you actually use the word that I've heard most often, and that is uh, the situation in Ukraine is dire uh, today. Uh, but uh, the reality is that the... There's a gathering storm uh, that I think uh, our allies here in Europe recognize. That's why it's, it's so heartening to me uh, to see Speaker Mike Johnson and uh, the Republican leadership moving forward on an aid bill. I think uh, America's the leader of the free world, Jake. And I think it's important in this moment that we uh, accept that responsibility, that we renew support for the Ukrainians who fought against this unprovoked and brutal invasion now for more than two years. Give them what they need to make the fight, because uh, as I, I said here today and, and have said for many years, uh, I, I have no doubt in my mind, having met Vladimir Putin, uh, that if Putin were allowed to overrun Ukraine, it would not be long before he crossed the border of a NATO country where our men and women in uniform would be required to fight. So uh, the situation is dire. Uh, uh, Vladimir Putin continues to brutalize the people of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, literally fired a missile at a hotel that, that took dozens of lives and injured nearly 100 men, women, and children. Uh, now is the time for America to lead, and I'm encouraged to see the Congress moving in that direction. They are moving in that direction, but it's taking quite some time, and, and a lot of the protest uh, against this bill is coming from uh, the right wing of the Republican Party in the House, uh, some of Donald Trump's most stalwart supporters, uh, what do you say to them uh, when they say right. not more, not one more penny to Ukraine? What's your response? Well, I, I say to them from my years of experience as vice president, from my years uh, uh, serving on the International Relations Committee in, in the House, uh, that, uh, that this is a real moment of testing uh, for the United States. And, and we need to meet this moment. Because look, I, I understand the frustration uh, with the failed policies of the Biden administration at home and abroad. I mean, literally the worst a border crisis in American history, resulting from Joe Biden undoing all the policies we put into effect, record inflation over the last three years, and that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan that undermined the credibility and the confidence of, of the free world in American leadership. I think it, it all literally set the stage for the moment we're in today. Mm -hmm. and, and I would just say to my, my colleagues on Capitol Hill, my old friends, uh, that now, now's a, a moment where uh, the United States of America needs to square our shoulders. We need to recognize we are the leader of the free world. Uh, and we need to step, step into this moment and send a deafening message, not just to Russia and Vladimir Putin, Jake, but also uh, renew our support to our cherished ally Israel, support Taiwan, and also send a very clear message to the mullahs in Tehran and, frankly, to, uh, uh, to uh, President Xi uh, in Beijing that mm -hmm. uh, America is going to stand firm for freedom. You say isolationism is never the answer. That was the theme of your speech earlier today. The rhetoric of your former running mate, Donald Trump, has been a major driving factor in your party, the Republican Party's gradual shift toward a more isolationist view over the past eight years. Maybe it's a minority view, but it's growing in power. Um, and this helped create the climate for the foreign aid fight we're seeing today, which is also threatening Speaker Johnson's job. Now, you have famously split with Mr. Trump 
over both January 6 and his views on foreign aid. But I wonder if, as Trump's former vice president, if you ever feel that maybe you played any role in the erosion of the Reagan ideology that you stand for. Well, I, I, first, let me not skip over the fact. I think Speaker Mike Johnson is in a tough spot. Look, uh, it's a very narrow majority. Uh, and uh, I think what uh, the American people will witness here is nothing short of moral courage. Here, Speaker Mike Johnson has decided to do what he believes is right uh, and trust the American people uh, with the outcome in this moment. And I commend him for that. But as to your question, it's a fair question. But I, I will tell you, I, I honestly believe the, the, uh, the emergence of this, this new Republican isolationism, I, I believe, is something that has come forth in, in the last three years, particularly with the disaster at our southern border, uh, the record inflation, uh, and, and the Russian uh, invasion uh, into Ukraine. I, I think it, you have many Republicans that are falling back to the notion that, that we've got problems here at home, we, we can't solve every problem in the world, when the reality is that uh, anyone that says that we can't secure our border, revive our economy, and be the leader of the free world has got a pretty small view of the greatest nation on earth. We, we've done both now for 75 years. Uh, we can do both again. And uh, in our administration, I honestly believe, Jake, that, you know, we built up our military. We stood with our allies, stood up to our enemies. Uh, we didn't go looking for foreign entanglements. But uh, when the moment presented itself, whether it was a fight against ISIS, taking down Qasem Soleimani, cruise missiles into Syria, we were willing to use American force. And that's, that's the opposite of isolationism. That's American leadership. You, uh, you have said that you're not endorsing Donald Trump. You also have not ruled out voting for him. Why not? Well, I'll just keep my vote to myself. You know, I'd, I'd never vote for Joe Biden, uh, but I thought it was fair. Many people had asked me what my posture was going forward, and I, you know, based upon the differences the president and I still have over my constitutional duties on January 6th, but also, as you said, uh, based upon how I see the president shying away from our commitment as leader of the free world, being prepared to ignore the national debt, now even walking away from a commitment to the right to life at the national level. I've, I've just made it clear that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump in this campaign, uh, but I'll, I'll keep my vote on my own and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll vote according to my conscience in private, just like every American will. Before you go, I do have to ask you about Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial, which is underway right now in New York. You've blasted the case that the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, has brought, saying it's, quote, nothing short of a political prosecution being affected by a Manhattan DA who literally campaigned on bringing charges against one particular American, uh, unquote. Um, surely you can't think it's okay to falsify business records. And, and I don't think you, what I know of you, that you would ever sanction a married man cheating on his wife with a porn star. So forgetting the trial for one second, what about the underlying alleged behavior? Well, I, I, look, the, the sort of details of this, the business details of this, I, uh, I, I want to remind you and your viewers that every American is entitled to a presumption of innocence. So I want to I maintain that posture as this criminal trial goes forward. But look, there's a lot of people across this country look at a case like this that two previous prosecutors rejected, and the current prosecutor actually rejected until he was pressured to bring it again. He changed it from a misdemeanor to a felony, and this just doesn't look like equal treatment under the law. Mr. Trump is absolutely presumed uh, innocent until proven guilty, no question about that. I did say alleged behavior. Do you think he's innocent of those charges, your personal view? You did. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care to speculate about it, to be honest with you. But I, I will tell you that the very idea of a campaign finance uh, case being brought uh, in state court uh, as a criminal matter, it, someone that's, uh, that's lived under campaign finance laws for, for most of my career at the federal level, it, it, uh, you know, Jake, to be honest, it's, it just comes across as a stretch. Former Vice President Mike Pence, thank you so much. Travel safe, sir. Thank you, Jake.